Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Today we are having a look at Machine Inside Reason again. Because uh, last week I got pretty frustrated with the experience. I wanted to see how intuitive it was. And um, part of it was my fault, I think. Been a while since I'd used Reason and I got audio tracks and mixed channels confused. I want to thank Matthias from Reason Studios for taking the time to comment on the video that was very much appreciated. He pointed out a better way of routing things. So, you know, I thought let's let's try it again with that new information and give it a go. If you want to see the link to an article that Matthias linked in his comment, check out last week's video. It's the pinned comment. That's that's a fairly good article as well. What we're going to do today is try out Machine and Reason again. So the first thing I did again was make a beat in the standalone version of Machine. This time though, I tried to utilize the Reason rack inside the Machine software as an AU plugin. I don't like the way it behaves on the unit. There are too many parameters. However, if you open it up inside the software, you can do what you want and it's actually pretty dope. I was actually really, really enjoying having access to some of my favorite effects in the Reason Rack as I was sound designing and making, making stuff on machine. Side note, side note. After using the Reason Rack in both the machine software and the Ableton software now, I'm pretty excited and optimistic about the future of Reason as like a standalone VST because it was dope being able to take my favorite stuff from Reason and pull it into a machine like that. The VST still has a lot of work to go with MIDI out and stuff, which hopefully we're getting really soon. But uh, yeah, that was cool. I was really enjoying that. So after I made my standalone beat, I switched over to Reason and had another go at using machine inside Reason 11. Spoiler, it works a lot better this time. So last time I added audio tracks and I think according to what Matthias said, I should have added mixed channels. I should have known this. I should have known this. See, using Ableton for a while got me thinking that tracks and mixed channels are the same thing because they are in Ableton. Man, I distinctly remember when I was doing this last week, I distinctly remember looking around for where the heck to plug in my send from machine into the audio track. I was thinking to myself, where's the input? Because I've used it before. Man, I forgot. All right, all right, this is, uh, this is looking good. This is, this is my bad. All right, okay, I'm excited about this. I think this is gonna work. So, let's go to the mixer. Let's route piano riff outside of external one and two. Keeping in mind what we discovered last time, that external one is both one and two. So, we route this one on external three, and that should be, external and four no no this is external one three and four th three and four external two yes this 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 one still confuses me a little bit let's just duplicate a bunch of these and we can delete them as needed i've got an interesting idea okay this is working so much better already i think one and two need to go directly into this input perfect and we'll call this one piano riff Bass. Okay. So I can't record anything onto these mix channel tracks. That's fine. That's fine. These two tracks are both connected to machine now. And in terms of what's happening, as far as I understand it, these tracks are like part of that machine. So that the taking the same color as machine. So I want this to be like a utility track. So if I make it gray, everything's gonna be gray. So I don't need these two tracks here. Delete tracks. Instead, what I need are two brand new audio tracks. So this one here we'll call Piano Riff Bass. 
What Mateus said to do is record enable this one, record enable this one. Now we no longer have any trap nonsense over here, which was what was frustrating me a whole bunch last time, but we should be able to select it here and here. Now if we do this and this, Yo, hello. Let me just check there. Okay. What's going on here? Ooh, no, 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 no. I don't like that. The biggest frustration I had last time was the fact that I ended up with double tracks in my sequencer and also double tracks in my mixer. This method seems to have fixed the double tracks in the sequencer situation which is probably the most annoying situation. The double tracks in the mixer thing is still annoying, sure, but you can throw these off to the side and just ignore them and pretend they're not there. In my mind, that is less of an issue. What I'm wondering though is, can I record it if it's muted? So let me just check that. Sick. So you, you can record if it's muted. That's that's pretty cool. Let's try route the drums one at a time. So... I've got an idea here that, it, that I think is going to be pretty cool actually. I obviously need to route the kick. Let me just think because this is weird. External one is one and two. External two is three and four. External three. My kick is a mono signal so if I pan it there. Now I should be able to go five and here. Now if I go three here, pan it hard right, that should be six. So I'll put that one there, call that. No, ooh. And right, here's my idea. Here's my idea. Okay, delete that for now. Utilities. Line mixer will be Fine, we'll put that there. Let's call this snare. Now we'll go out of six into one here. Uh, keep open. I've got two more snares over here, so we'll route both of those to external four. These are not all mono inputs. Oops, that messes things up a little bit. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna treat every signal as a stereo signal and we'll see what happens. External four, external five, and external six. These should all be snares if I play this scene. Okay, so um, currently I've used up one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm up to external seven. This is where it becomes a problem, I think. So I'm enjoying this idea a whole lot more, but this is where I encounter the problem that I got, or that I had last week, where I don't understand why this is a thing. Machine has 16 external outputs. On the back of this, this is external output one. This is external output, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can only use eight of the 16 external outputs. Maybe I'm missing something and don't understand why this is a thing, but my, my bright idea that I had just before was you can route all the different snares to like this and, and mix it and have one snare mix channel and route all the different hi-hats and mix it and have one hi-hat channel. However, if I do this, I've used all my channels already and I have a ride to incorporate. So that means I'm gonna have to cut something. So, uh, goodbye, separate hi-hat channel. It was nice knowing you. So now what I'm going to have to do is take this, which will be external 7, put it into the input here, and route both my open and closed hi-hats to external 7. Which 
actually is not as big of a problem in this situation because I should actually have my hi-hats on choke groups and I don't. But now I can have number eight for the ride. So make sure the ride is routed to external A. Okay, so thinking practically, and literally apparently, <laughs> what the heck? My snare idea here is all fine and dandy. However, if I'm just recording this one mix channel, it's not gonna matter if I've got individual control over the snares on this mixer here. So that actually becomes redundant. So I could free up two more external outputs on the machine and do my mixing inside the machine plugin. However, if you did want to do this kind of situation, or if you had more things, it's a problem. I don't know, I, I don't understand. Again, like, I'm not a programming guy. I don't understand what goes on behind the scenes to create reason. So maybe there, maybe there is a legitimate reason why we only have eight possible external outputs when there are 16 possible external outputs in machine. Maybe, I, I don't know. However, currently this is what we've got to work with. Only eight possible external outputs. Um, which is mildly annoying, to be honest. But for this minimal beat, it's sufficient. So, whew, okay, okay, we got this, we got this. Exciting, so we'll delete these ones. Now, if we create one, two, three, four, stereo input, record enable snare. Let's just make sure all of these are routed to machine. Muted. So, now if I go here, record enable all of these, moment of truth. If I hit record, we're expecting it to record all of my tracks. Oh, it's quiet, because I turned mute off. Fun fun. Alright. We'll just, we'll just, just enjoy the music in silence. I don't know if I, I don't know if I changed scenes at the right time. Whew, this is like a silent disco, only instead of listening. You just get to see the waveforms. If we and play it back, we should have. Oh yeah. So, what have we learned? There is a much more effective way of routing machine inside Reason that doesn't result in you having to have a whole heap of redundant audio tracks in your sequencer, which is nice. However, that doesn't fix the problem of having a whole lot of redundant tracks in your mixer. You can get them off to the side, put them away, but I, I would just like the option for that to be a little tidier. And it's important to make sure you mute your group channel so that it doesn't uh, play two lots of the same thing. The, the, the one thing that I still don't understand, I, I, I don't know, why are there 16 external outputs in machine, but only eight external outputs on the back of the VST, because we, we discussed one and two are not external outputs, one and two. One and two are external outputs, one. External output two is three and four, for some reason. And what this means is we only have eight external outputs to use. So, um, hmm, I gotta say, I have definitely enjoyed using machine inside Reason a lot more this week. It's definitely functional. It's definitely definitely something that can be can be utilized. So I take back what I said. 
last week. However, in my opinion, it's not quite there. It's still a little bit annoying, mainly because of the issue of only having eight external outs available instead of 16. And I remember thinking last week when I was working that it was sounding a little trash. I accidentally screwed up my audio, so I apologize. It would have probably just sounded trash to you anyway, but it was sounding a little trash. And I think the reason for that is because I was trying to route the stereo channels to the left and the right on machine, which kind of increased the volume and it didn't sound good. So routing stuff out in stereo is definitely the way to go. However, you're encountering these issues here. Overall, this is a much more satisfactory result, but it's still not quite there. It's functional, it's functional. It's not fantastic. So that's the video for today, guys. Thanks for checking it out. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Once again, I just wanna thank Matthias for actually commenting on the video and helping us out because, uh, you know, I feel a lot better about using machine in Reason now. Like I said, I think it's very usable, but I don't think it's perfect yet. I think there's still a bit of room for improvement in terms of uh, <laughs> using it. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you guys next week.